Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video where we are going to take a look at the production build of React. And in some of the previous videos, we've already used the npm run build command. And in this video, we're going to take a look what actually happens under the hood. So this is actually taken from the docs and it says that npm run build will cause to correctly bundle React in production mode and optimize the build for the best performance. The build is minified and the file names include the hashes. And in the next slide, uh, we'll take a look what uh, what's actually going on with those hashes. But what, you know, for the main part is going on is that our code is being compiled using Babel and then runs through Webpack. So let's take a look at Babel, which is a very uh, popular JavaScript compiler. And what it essentially does is it takes your code and it compiles it down to also JavaScript, but in a JavaScript that is supported by many browsers. So I will show you an example. So let's say we have um, an object, uh, which is address, for example, and it has, let's say, it has street, main street, and it has city, uh, New York. So let's say we want to assign a new, uh, we want to create a new variable, let's call it city. And we say that city is address.city, right? And this would be completely valid code. But now let's imagine that we are not always sure whether the address contains a city property, right? So if we would do something like this, um, our code in, in React would actually crash because it will say, hey, I cannot find city on the um, variable address, all right? So it will crash. So in order to prevent it from crashing, we can use the optional chaining operator, which will essentially say like, okay, if city exists on address, then show it. If not, then just assign undefined to the city variable. But what you can see down here below is that Babel compiled the code and you see it looks a little different. And you might ask yourself, well, you know, why is that the case? And if I Google for optional chaining operator and then I will put can I use after it, there is this website out there and um, this actually shows you the support for the optional chaining operator because this is a relatively new uh, feature. This is an ES2020 JavaScript feature. And uh, well, you can see that it is supported by, you know, most major browsers that are up to date, but some older versions, for example, uh, Chrome 79, which was released uh, um, in 2019, does not support that feature. So that would mean that our JavaScript would not run properly in Chrome 79 browsers. But because we're using Babel and it runs, uh, it compiles down to uh, to this code, we can use it across pretty much all browsers, also the outdated ones, right? So that's the use case of Babel. Now it also um, goes through Webpack and Webpack is a module bundler. So I think this animation is, is pretty nice. And uh, there's actually, shows like, you know, the bare basics of what Webpack is actually doing. So let's imagine we have a project, we have like some, some, uh, some images, some GPack, PNG, we got some JavaScript files, we got some SAS files, and Webpack then bundles those modules and converts it into static assets. And you will see in a minute how that looks like. But there's also some other things that Webpack is doing. You can think about, you know, because we're using Webpack with Create React App, we are allowed to use those import and export statements. So if we, for example, go to the index.js file, right here we importing, you know, the, uh, the React library, um, but you can also import, you know, like separate functions from your own file. You can import CSS, certain images, and so on. And that's very convenient, of course, but that's only, allowed because we're using Webpack, okay? Uh, 
Webpack also does this thing, it's called tree shaking. So let's say our project have certain unused assets. It will then kind of like throw them away and not include them in the build folder, which is great because you want to ship as little code as possible to the user um, in order for them to use your application. It also allows for code splitting uh, as we've used in the uh, performance section of this course. And it also reduces the bundle size by minification. And you will see in a minute how minified code actually looks like. You know, there's a lot of more things Webpack is doing, but these are some of the things you can, uh, can think about. So uh, let's take a look at those chunks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run the npm run build command, and I will get back to you once that's done. All right, so now when I open up my terminal right here, um, what you see is that the build has successfully been completed and it has generated some files and it also gzipped uh, those files. And you can see right here that we have a couple of chunks and this is what I showed you before. This is what Webpack actually did. Webpack, you know, took all the modules, you know, our React application and our Node modules that we installed, including React, and then converted it in those static assets. Now, you see there are a couple of different um, chunks right here. So whenever you see the main dot hash dot chunk dot JS, so you that's this chunk right here. This is actually our application code. Okay, so uh, we will take a look in a minute um, in the browser, uh, but you will see that this actually includes our application code. Now, if the chunk says number dot hash dot chunk dot JS, so that's this one right here and this one, that could be either vendor code, right? So this is coming from your node module. So if I go over to node modules, you will see we have all these, um, these libraries uh, that are being used. And um, well, that's actually uh, where those uh, node modules live in your build folder, but it can also be code split chunks. So if you've seen the video about code splitting, you will see that whenever we code split it, for example, a certain page or a certain component, then it would create uh, an extra chunk that would look like something like this, right? So number.hash.chunk.js. And the reason uh, it's creating those hashes is because the browser is essentially caching all these chunks. And when we make a change to our code base, so let's say we change the text in the app.jsx file right here, um, what then essentially will happen is that only the main chunk will be updated. So it will, you know, we will make then a new uh, production build. So we run npm run build again, and it will then find that we change the application code and it will then change the hash. And that's how the browser knows that the content of your application has actually changed and thus it should like throw away the alt cache and cache the new file. So that's um, kind of like the idea behind those hashes. Uh, so let's take a look at, let's serve this application and take a look at how this actually looks like in the browser. So you see now it's being served on localhost port 5000. You will see right here, we got this as a test and now when I open up the dev tools and I navigate to sources, you'll see that whenever I click on static, you see right here we have, and this is by the way, just as you can see right here. So here we have a build folder, which is essentially also this, um, this static folder. And here you see, we have our note modules, our JavaScript and our CSS. So now when I go to JavaScript, you will see we got those chunks. And when I click right here on main, and I'll just make it a little bigger because it's hard to read now. And what you will see now is that this is actually the code that was generated by Webpack and it also um, uglified or minified the code. So when I now click on pretty print, you will see that this is actually our code and it's you know barely possible to read it as you can see because it uses all these shorthands, but for your computer, it doesn't matter that it looks like this, right? Uh, but it's just not easy for, for us to read as humans. But what you will see right here is that we actually have our, this is a test 
um, uh, like line of text we got in our app.jsx file. Okay, so this is where all those um, static files go. And the same goes for the CSS. So right here, see, we got a chunk that contains CSS. And yeah, this is essentially the CSS. And this is then used by the browser to um, actually show what uh, what needs to be uh, needs to be shown on the screen. So yeah, that's pretty much all there. There is to the talk about the the production build. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.